This is Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. This sub-region of West Africa shares common borders and a rich and interconnected history. In 2014, the region known for its lively culture, beautiful landscapes, and tropical beaches had become unrecognizable. Fear. A terrifying disease unknown to us. Unknown to how to address it. And of course, people were afraid. Just like we were afraid as officials. Within 15 weeks, the virus spread from Guinea to Sierra Leone and Liberia. Work, school, and virtually all economic activity had come to a halt. Like the conflict that spread before, the disease crossed borders and spread fear and instability. We quickly knew that we were doing something wrong. And by this time, the international community, which was also slow, due to their own fear and concerns, uh, had now come in and we then changed working with them. We changed the approach to one that would put the responsibility for addressing the disease into the hands of communities and their leaders. And that worked. On August 8th, 2014, the World Health Organization declared West Africa a public health emergency of international concern. With the backing of World Bank Group support, partners on the ground, along with UN agencies and CSOs, rallied to help the affected countries get to zero cases. This system was ébranlé in 2014 with the l'avènement of the malaria virus Ebola, and has mis à nu the insuffisance of our system of health, and has shown that the system of health was not assez robust to respond to the public health public and to all other events of the sanitary It was a race not only to get to zero cases, but to mitigate the impact of the crisis. The schools we are closed up to two times mid May Ebola breakout. So we stop schools because children while praying with each other they contact disease which they don't even know. During the spring of 2015, the emergency funding helped get more than four million children back to school by providing instructional materials and a safer environment for learning. Ahead of the rainy season, 240,000 farmers received seeds and fertilizers to help avoid a food crisis. And in Liberia alone, 28,000 health workers received training and hazard pay to support them in their fight to get to zero cases. By March 2015, the Ebola virus disease had infected more than 26,000 people and more than 10,000 had died. But there was hope. By now, a coordinated effort by communities and international partners to get to zero cases was reaping results. Door-to-door -door communication campaigns as well as contact tracing was working. I come to these people to check them in the morning, throughout the day, to know about them, the help. If I don't have someone, just like you ask, you know, ask me, I, don't have, I will wait for the person until I see the person before I hug him. This is my, my home, this is my home, this is my community, so I don't like to sit down. If you don't vomit, you see the gets. Ebola! If you post in the vomit, you to see kick Ebola vomit. out of Sierra Leone, members of the community, along with government and international partners, identify and monitor families that have come in contact with known cases. Well, it was a pull and I'm papa. I read now all of these right now, all the panic, all the food right now. Because they don't can't take my sick one and go test her. They be positive. So now they ain't got the other password. We want to go to say these 21 days, they don't know nothing. 
Sana's father contracted Ebola from the burial of the community medicine man. After five days in treatment, Sana's father died. Due to the quick response from community monitors and health workers, no one else in the household succumbed to the same fate. So my main role is removing all the sick people from the community. Somebody is sick, my community monitors are there, my contact tracers are there. They'll call me, I'll call 117, then I'll be in the scene, because I'm a clinical person. So we'll take a look at the patient and see if the patient meets criteria for Ebola. The importance of contact tracing is breaking the chain, the chain of transmission. Because with the Ebola, any gap you leave, any stone you leave unturned, then there will be 100 cases. Ultimately what we're trying to do and what we're all trying to do at the moment is track back to ascertain where any one individual gets infected and who they may infect afterwards. If we can manage the chains of transmission and work out where people become infected, we can stop it. If we didn't have contact tracing, who knows how bad it could be. It could be uh, infinitely worse. An already weak health system was decimated. More than 500 health workers lost their lives. And during the peak of the outbreak in October 2014, many facilities closed. Because the whole second phase of Ebola started in redemption. Where our colleague came, then she got infected and came to the facility, and many other persons died while taking care of her. So I'm, I personally, I was afraid. I was really traumatized. So my, my, my police said, I don't want to, I will not be on nice anymore. And so I said, but we can't continue because we have to save our people. And we took off to save lives. So the best thing, let us just take all the preventive measures. It will work. In the first instant, we had to mitigate the fears of doctors and healthcare workers, restoring their confidence because people were dying not only from the disease, dying from the lack of access to health facilities. The response to strengthen the health system became the most urgent. The task at hand was enormous. Rallying health workers and recruiting more to tackle the epidemic and provide essential health care would be the first challenge to overcome. I believe that is uh, my professional obligation to help not only my, my own specific people, but the people of Africa. These heroic health workers and the partnership between the local and international community was key to overcoming the epidemic and getting to zero cases. But building a strong health system shaped up to be a much larger challenge that would take years to accomplish. Thank you.